Hi Calvary, I'm Christian, the online director, and I've got your word for today. How much money would you need for your life to be perfect? And by perfect, I mean where nothing bad could ever happen to you. Have you ever played this game or dreamt of, if only I won the lottery and had mm, X number of dollars, well then everything would be perfect. Well, if you have, you're not alone. And guess what? This isn't a new way of thinking. Humanity's been tempted to think this way since, well, since the beginning of time. The author of Psalm 49 attempts to shake us out of this thinking. He starts this chapter trying to get our attention. He says, listen to this, all you people, pay attention. Everyone in the world, high and low, rich and poor, listen. Continuing in verse 5, he says, Why should I fear when trouble comes, when enemies surround me? They trust in their wealth and boast of great riches, yet they cannot redeem themselves from death by paying a ransom to God. See, no one can earn enough to achieve happiness, perfection, or immortality. In Ecclesiastes 5.10, Paul says, Those who love money will never have enough. How meaningless to think that wealth brings true happiness. He also wrote in 1 Timothy 6.10, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. These verses were written to help us to realize that we are wrong to put our faith in money. Why? Because in doing so, you're putting your faith in something other than God, and those who do are destined for failure. Psalms 49.16 says, So don't be dismayed when the wicked grow rich and their homes become even more splendid. For when they die, they take nothing with them. Their wealth will not follow them into the grave. Verse 20, people who boast of their wealth don't understand. They will die, just like animals. Now, if you think that is just other people who are the rich that need to be saved, consider for a second that Americans are wealthy compared to many countries. After adjusting for cost of living differences, a typical American still earns an income that is 10 times the income received by the typical person in the world. You are rich. If you're listening or watching this on an electronic device with internet access, you're rich. You're rich if you're currently in a home or a vehicle with climate control. Do you see what I'm saying? Even though it doesn't always feel that way, we are rich. So how do you avoid being one of the rich that puts their faith in money like the psalmist is warning against? The answer is simple to say, but sometimes hard to start. Tithe. Deuteronomy 14.22 says, You must set aside a tithe of your crops, one-tenth of all the crops you harvest each year. I'm sure there aren't that many of us listening to this who are farmers, so for us, the thing that we tithe with is our income, and for most of us, that is money. You must trust God and get into practice of taking the first 10% of your earnings and give it to God. In doing so, you're acknowledging to God that He is the supplier of all that you need. You are giving back as He has commanded, and you're saying, I trust you with all of my resources. Malachi 3.10 counsels us to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. This is the only promise that God makes in the Bible where He challenges us to test what He says is true. That's pretty spectacular. So if you're not already giving a tithe, I encourage you to do it and watch and see what the Lord will do. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the best part of everything you produce. Then He will fill your barns with grain, and your vats will overflow with good wine. I hope this word has encouraged you to test what God says and trust Him with all of your resources and do so happily. God loves a cheerful giver. Thanks for listening, Calvary. Have a great day.